rein. So, are you, uh, are you pretty much ready for bed? Yeah. I think Lucy's ready for bed. Uh, and do you have your, your water with you? Good. Have you brushed your teeth? Smell check. <laughs> Very good. And <clears throat> what was... What was the best part of your day? You had fun at school. Nice. Oh, you like playing your soccer game. You did great in your soccer game. I was super proud of you. Yeah. Didn't you score like two... <laughs> I know you scored two goals. I'm going to pretend like I did. But didn't you score like two goals as if I didn't know? Of course you did. Uh, that was very awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. No, I played, uh, I played a lot of sports when I was your age. Well, is that, let me think. I mean, basically, I definitely played soccer. And I definitely played coach pitch, which is baseball. Um, and definitely played that. And then, what else did I do? I didn't start playing hockey until I was... How old was I? I mean, I guess I was around your age. Like, like late junior high. Because then, yeah, I eventually went on to play my freshman and sophomore year. And then I played a little bit of golf, and... Like your uncle and me used to play tennis and stuff, but not uh, not uh, not organized just for fun. Um, what's that? You want to inter? You're interviewing me for a school project. Oh, oh, well, that's kind of cool. Okay, okay, you want to interview me? All right, all right. Well, <clears throat> uh, I guess you know ask away what what's your first uh, official interview question what was my first memory my first memory i was very young it's rare to have a memory this early i was a, i i may not have quite been 2 years old uh, and we have a memory of going to the doctor, <clears throat> and we had a doctor, a pediatrician named uh, uh, Dr. Horner, and he was from my, this is like literally a fuzzy memory, like if you could see it, it's like, it's like a hazy, gauzy memory, um, and I remember him having like a whitish beard, and like a whitish gray hair, an older gentleman, obviously. And I remember, I remember liking him. I remember thinking he was very nice. And I remember him uh, tapping on my uh, on my knee to check my reflexes. And yeah, that's my that's my first memory. According according to your grandparents, my parents. I was, I think they said I was like a year and a half old. So yeah, that's a, um, <clears throat> that's a very early memory. So yeah, that's my, that's my earliest memory. It's going to the doctor. All right. Next question. What, what was my first job? My first real job. Well, you could say I had a job when I was like, I mean, like mowing the grass. Uh, my parents would pay me like 20 bucks to go mow our yard back in, uh, back in Ohio. We had a pretty good size yard, like a, a half acre and a little push hand mower. So it took me like 45 minutes or an hour to mow the grass. Um, hated it. <laughs> now I don't mind, you know, it's funny. Uh, but I didn't like mowing the grass when I was a young man. And then, um, <clears throat> but like my first real job where I was like hired by somebody was I was a, uh, I was a waiter at Pizza Hut, which uh, is this, you know, a little, it's a pizza joint, obviously. I don't think we actually have those anymore. It used to be 
I know where Pizza Hut's still, but a Pizza Hut used to be a place where you could, uh, like, sit down and have a meal with your family and, you know, have a, have a beer or soda and, like, sit down and have some pizza. Um, I don't think they do that anymore. Uh, I'm sure there are some pizza places still, but not like, like, fast food pizza places. But anyway, that was my, that was my first job as a server for Pizza Hut. Yeah, I think I was, uh, I think I just turned 16. Yeah, I mean, I got my, I had my driver's permit, uh, which is what you need before you get your driver's license. And I had that when I was 15. In fact, I remember, unrelated story, you know, your uncle, my brother, was teaching me how to drive, and we were in a, a parking lot for, like, a, you know, a concert venue, and a big parking lot, and there was nobody there, it was like 8 p.m. at night, so it was empty, there was no show, and, and you know, we were like, he was, I was driving around in the parking lot in a five-speed manual, I will have to say, so the car I actually learned how to drive on was a, uh, a five-speed, I don't even know if you can buy a five-speed anymore. I think you can only buy those for, like, special race cars, basically, or something. But, um, anyway, a little trickier, but I wouldn't have to drive on a five-speed. But, um, yeah. It was my... How did I choose my career? Hmm, interesting. Well, kind of a long story. Um... Uh, I was... I was... How did I fall into my... Well, okay. So, I I moved out of Ohio to go pursue acting. Right, you knew that. And I went to college in Seattle and got my degrees in uh, theater and dance. And then I came down to, to Los Angeles to pursue acting. And, like, many actors ended up being, you know, a bartender and, you know, kind of grinding it out. And then I discovered chess... And then I started teaching chess, but, like, part-time. And then it became full-time. And then I left that company temporarily to start another company with uh, my brother and, and uh, my dad. So, your uncle and your grandpa. Um, and then and then the pandemic was coming, you know. And so I ended up switching paths. I was doing uh, audiobooks and doing a lot of reading, so I was already used to, like, editing and microphones and doing sound audio editing. And uh, your mom's business partner thought I had a good voice and would be good at doing ASMR. And I didn't know what that was at the time. Uh, it was, like, in January of 2020. And, uh, you know, ended up doing that, uh, so, I don't know if I chose it, it kind of, it kind of, that didn't fall into my lap, that's for sure, um, but it was through encouragement from, um, other people to try something new, it's kind of, it's kind of weird, yeah, yeah, what did I want to be when I grew up? Well, okay, so, I remember in the fourth grade, um, I read a book about, uh, um, a doctor, I think it was Walter Reed, actually, I think I read, like, a biography on Walter Reed, and I thought, boy, that'd be, be really cool to be a doctor and help people, and I knew that, you know, doctors were kind of, like, esteemed, and like, ooh, it's a big deal to be a doctor, right? And so I knew that people viewed doctors with, you know, high esteem, you know, you know, ooh, doctors and things like that. So I thought I wanted to be a doctor. Um, and I really wasn't sure what I was going to do until I was a sophomore in high school. And I auditioned for my first play, which was Lost in Yonkers. It's a pretty well-known Neil Simon play, and I got cast as the youngest brother, Artie, and 
you know, had a great time rehearsing and learning everything. And when we did our first performance, we got a, a standing ovation. And I had this moment of like, aha, like Eureka. You know what I mean? Like, it just like hit me. And I was like, I want to be an actor. And uh, so it happened. It happened kind of fast, if I'm being honest. I don't know if I really knew I wanted to be an actor before that. Um, maybe a little bit, but I was definitely like, ooh, I want to be an actor. And then that was like my main focus. And then through weird twists and turns and tribulations, I eventually, you know, became a, a YouTuber. But you have to realize, you see, you know, when, when I was your age, you know, when I was your age, my career didn't exist. There was no such thing as being a YouTuber or a streamer. Like, those those careers just, just, they didn't exist. And so, you know, like, I didn't know, I didn't know, you know? Had that been an option when I was your age? I don't, I don't know. The world is so different now than it was when I was a kid. It's kind of hard to, to put your finger on. Like, it's, you know, when I was a kid, you know, we did not have the internet. We didn't have cell phones. We had a computer, but it was like one of the early Apple Apple IIe's. Uh, no, it was the generation before the Apple IIe. Um, but it was like a really expensive computer when, when, when I was like a kid. Well, your grandpa was working um, uh, in the Air Force in the materials lab. So your grandpa was like pretty, pretty tech savvy um, and was always interested in like technology. And, and he, he went nuts, uh, and this is, like, in, the, like, the late 80s, and spent, you know, like, the equivalent of, like, I don't know, like, six or seven grand on that computer, which is, it was, like, a lot of money, and because of that, we, I was definitely one of the first kids that I knew that had, like, an Apple computer in their home, because it was, like, really fancy to have one. Uh, and there's a photograph of me somewhere standing on a computer chair playing around on the old the old Apple uh, when I was like five years old or six years old or something. So, uh, so yeah, we've always had computers since I was very young, but there was no internet. There was no cell phones. There was no GPS. You know, there's so many things that we just kind of Maybe there was GPS, actually, I don't know. But there are so many things that we just completely take for granted now that, um, you know, wasn't part of my world. So the world's changed dramatically. And that's the thing is, you gotta realize, like, that wasn't always the case. You know, if you go back a hundred years, you know, somebody in, like, the 1920s or even the 1930s or the 1940s could have expected to have a similar job to their parents, you know? Like, you know, if you were a dude, you know, you could be an engineer, a plumber, a carpenter, a policeman, a fireman, a doctor, a lawyer, but you could be, like, working with your hands, basically. Yeah, I mean, you could have been a miner or a, uh, a factory assembly line worker, like my great-grandfather was. But, yeah, you know, like, the world of my great-grandfather to his son, it was different. You know, that's like World War One to World War Two, But it wasn't, like, crazy different. It's not like, you know, there were new jobs invented out of thin air that were nothing like the jobs previously. Like, I mean, maybe a pilot, but how many people, you know are pilots. So I guess you could say, well, the big difference from my great-grandpa to my grandpa would have been, well, a pilot 
was a career, but you had planes. I don't know. It's just the point is it wasn't that different, you know, like it was different, but it wasn't that different. Now, the world now, compared to when I was a kid in the 80s, is a completely different world, you know? Even when I was pursuing acting uh, in Los Angeles, things changed dramatically. You know, when I first came to L.A., like, you had to have, you know, printed headshots, and they were black and white. They were just switching over to color when I got down to L.A., like 2005, 2006, 2007, and by 2017, 2018, everything was going digital, everything was in color, and then the pandemic hit, and, and that really changed acting from people driving all over Hollywood to go do auditions, to everybody had high-quality cell phones with 4K cameras on them, and you could just film your own auditions and send your auditions in, which was so much easier than driving around L.A., looking for parking, paying for parking, paying for gas. It was a, a much bigger, uh, there was a lot more steps involved. So even in a short period of time, <clears throat> a lot of things changed, um, and they're changing very fast, you know, I mean, I, I have no idea what the world's going to look like for you in 15, 20 years, I have no idea, but it's going to be interesting, it's going to be interesting, um, but I hope you, you know, find cool things, and find unique interests, and uh, as long as you, as long as you pursue things with, with passion, I think you're going to be okay. You'll figure it out. Uh, next question. What's my favorite food? Hmm, well, that's a little more direct. Okay, that's a tough call. It's a very, very tough call, because you know I love food from all over the world, right? Yeah. Um... I mean, I love Indian food, I love Thai food, I love Chinese food, I love German food, I love French food, I love sushi, and so many, so many Italian food, and oh man, like American food, barbecue, oh, love it, right? Mexican, oh, love Mexican food. But, if I had to pick one, it would probably be my, uh, my sauce, my, uh, my spicy, chunky Italian tomato sauce with, uh, some angel hair pasta. I don't know why. I've been making that meal. Your brother and I, not your brother, my brother, your uncle, um, we started playing around with that recipe when we were in college. Actually, before college, when I was, like, 18 um, we were living together in Columbus, Ohio, and we started playing around with making, uh, delicious tomato sauce, and using, you know, Italian sausage, and red wine, and onions, and spices, and stuff, and we got pretty good at it, and we would sometimes, like, try, like, not try, we would make dinner for, you know, our, our parents, you know, your grandma, grandpa, and so we started playing around with those recipes and, and just, I always really liked it. I always really liked it. And this has been something that, man, you know, if I had to pick one, that would probably, that would probably be the one. Okay, last question, then you gotta go to bed. How did I meet your mother? Well, uh, I met your mom on online, on a dating app. Yeah, uh, you probably heard of it, Tinder. Although Tinder has changed a lot. It was a little different back when uh, your mom and I met, but I mean, the principle is the same. You just, you put up a profile, uh, put up some photographs, talk a little bit about yourself, 
and you see if you match with somebody, and if you match, you can DM them, and hopefully start up a conversation, right? And I remember your mom and I, uh, your mom and I matched, and I, I, I DM'd her, hey, you know, Jeremiah, I'd like to meet you, and, you know, she messaged me back, and and uh, she seemed really cool and really fun, you know. Your your mother's hilarious. And then I didn't hear back from her, which sometimes happens, you know, in dating. Sometimes you get ghosted, and I, you know, sometimes people just don't text you back or whatever. I like, guess no harm, no foul. But uh, I didn't hear back for like two or three days, and I was like, man, dude, I really liked that chick. Bummer, bummer. You know what? F it. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more. One more. One more DM. And so I wrote one more message. It's been like, hey, you know, I haven't heard back from you, but I'd love to, love to meet up and grab a coffee, grab a drink. And uh, luckily, she responded. So uh, you know, the rest, the rest is history. But that's, that's how your mom and I met, and we had our first date at uh, Mercedes Grill, which is uh, a little restaurant down there in Venice Beach. Yeah. All right. All right, kiddo, you need to get to bed. Um, it's funny being interviewed. Uh, but you need to get to bed, okay? All right, close your eyes. second. They're almost asleep. They're almost asleep. Okay. Sweet dreams, honey. All right. I'll see you in the morning.